In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to airbrush a basic marble effect. I'm going to be doing this on an aluminium composite panel, but that said, you can do it on any particular surface that you wish. Let's get into the tutorial right now. So first thing I'm going to do is prep up this aluminium composite panel. It's 305 by 280 mil. I'm just going to remove the clear protective sheet before giving it a light scotchy. Now I've chosen to go with the matte side because I'm just going to give it a very light scotch bright. So with most of my artwork I'll go the glossy side. So here's the grey scotch bright. You can see it's a one that's already been used and I'm just going to lightly scuff up the surface. I'm just going to clean the surface with a bit of wax and grease remover, this one by DNA Paints. It's nice and convenient because in the aerosol, so I just spray a bit of that on the surface. Then using paper towel, I'm going to give that a clean. So wipe it in with one paper towel and then come back over the top with another clean one. We're all ready and prepped. What I want to do now using an art knife is just cut out some positive templates. I'm just going to use this art marker and use the fine end. I'm just going to draw out some shapes that I wish to cut. Now, as I mentioned, these are going to be positive masks. So what that means is that they're going to protect the white of the surface. And that way I can dust around the remaining area. And this one I'm just going to turn into a completed section, seeing as our panel's bigger than the, the reference. Like that. I want a larger section as well. So this bit here, I'm just again using a bit of the reference, but sort of loosely following what is there. You don't have to copy it exactly. And now using the knife, I'm just going to cut around these. You don't have to be perfect. Just roll the blade between your fingers. You can also get swivel knives. I have used them in the past, but I'm just so used to using these regular art knives. They work for me, so whatever works best for you. So there we have it, some positive masks that I can use to mask up some of these areas and to create our marble texture. So now I'm going to just lay these down. I am utilizing a reference image by Canva. If you're interested to learn more about Canva, I will leave a link in the description below. You can check that out. You can even install it free and have a bit of a play with it and see if it's a good graphic solution for you. So there we've placed the four pieces. I think this one I'm going to move over to the edge a little bit, twist that like so, that one there, move that over. Okay, happy with that. Now I'm completely aware this is aluminium or aluminium for all of our US viewers. These magnets obviously don't stick. However, the weight of the magnet is enough just to secure it somewhat into place. I'm not too concerned. If it moves a little bit, it's not the end of the world. What I want to create first is an extremely light gray tone. So I'm going to mix it up using the transparent base and true black. I don't want it to be a complete opaque gray like the foundation gray hence why I'm using the transparent base and by putting drops of black in that you'll see what happens just using one of the trident mixing bottles the 50 mil ones they're nice and handy because they've got the marble in them and what I'm going to do is just tip a bit of the transparent base in there first I'm doing all this by eye it's not necessarily measured out I'll make up enough so I can use it on another artwork and at this stage I'm not going to add any reducer yet I'm going to test it first and now I'm just going to do some drops of black should be enough at the moment test that so I don't know what exactly that was maybe 10 drops all up give it a good shake and you can see I've got a nice gray tone and I think that's pretty good for the first tone just putting that transparent gray or you could call it extremely weak transparent black what I want to do is just dust around these areas with that gray ever so slightly it's going to be hardly visible that's what I want the marble is extremely subtle so less is definitely more so what I'd suggest is sort of chase around each one of the templates with the airbrush from a fair distance away, I'm probably about, I don't know, 15 centimetres from the surface, something like that. 
keep that air pressed down and then just dust around. You can see now that that's moved, how bright that actually is. And then what I'm gonna do is, while I've got those bits masked up, I'm just gonna dust around the rest of the panel just to give it some tone. And I'm applying it patchy, so it's not perfect at all. Again, that one's moved and you can really notice it now. And now we're just gonna unmask them and you can see how stark that really is with me hardly even dusting over the top like it was a really, really soft, transparent gray mix. But the paper templates have worked out nicely. And if you wanna add in a bit more texture, you can still grab these, get your gray again and do some extra ones, just softer. Don't need to be everywhere, just in select areas, so that, that way you're creating another layer and you're still using the same tone. Just don't go as heavy. Remember, it's the subtle textures that make these designs. And even just hit some edges like that. And then we can dust over these as well. Tone them down a little bit. Okay, so now with this same tone, just gonna blend around it and actually add in some of the veins of the marble. If you spider out a little bit, that's fine. You can even do some finer veins like that and blow it back out. see how it's starting to blend in a bit more now just chasing that outside edge and by using this tone I've got more control I'm not going too dark and we want it nice and subtle and then I'll go that really dark tone to finish it off and you'll notice the difference see I'm just sort of making it up using my reference just as a guide. You can see how I'm further away to dust in these areas and then up nice and close for the sharper ones. Same with when I'm following the edge, these are more subtle. So I'm deliberately further away for those areas. And then on here, where I wanna get rid of that paper mask edge, I'm up nice and close. Again, certain ones are nice and sharp, whereas for the softer ones like this, I'm probably about five centimeters away from the surface. And I'm gradually going darker in certain areas, kind of using the airbrush as if I'm sketching with it, which is pretty much how I um, airbrush my artwork anyway. And then I'll just join up sections to create softer veins like that. And then if I want to define it a little bit more, I can pick out a little area like that. I'm not going right across, right? So I'm not linking it completely. I'm just sort of hitting that center section and then your eye will finish off the rest. And that'll also give it the impression that it's gone from a harsher vein into a softer vein. And then sort of doing these foggy bits uneven bit of a circular motion. So you want to do some of those areas, but not too many, not everywhere. 
So this design in particular, it's very much one of those things where you just got to do it bit by bit, step back and have a look. And whenever you step back from your artwork, what you can do, a little tip, is squint your eyes and hold your reference up. So you're sort of looking at the reference and your image with your eyes squinted. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut out all of the detail and just show you all the shapes and shadows. And it'll also give you a good indication of where your shadows and highlights are, like what strength they're at and whether or not you're running fairly accurate with your work. Obviously for me, because my eyesight's pretty bad, hence why I wear glasses, I can just take uh, my glasses off and I get that blur happening quite easily. So again, just chasing these ones specifically because of that real harsh edge that we created when I did the dusting and I left that positive mask on there. It's really noticeable, but at least I've got that bright whiteness to a certain extent and I can just dust over it and I'm getting a nice variation between the tone. This one needs hardly anything. Just create more of a vein in there. And working in off the edges, bringing that shading in. Remember, I've still got the darker tone to go. What I want to do now using a Faber-Castell eraser pencil is just erase some highlights into the marble before I move to the dark tone. So this 7057 eraser pencil has a white end which is harsher erasing and a pink end which is softer erasing. I'm going to be predominantly using the harsher one because this is Trident paint so it does harden a lot quicker than something like the Createx illustration colors. So it may be difficult to remove the bulk of it with this particular one. So I'm going to start off with the white and because I'm going to be leaning on the surface I'm just going to put on some gloves just so that none of the oil from my hands goes onto the artwork and now we're gonna just attack some of these areas see how it goes you can see it's quite aggressive which is what we want and let's try the softer end see if that works if it hasn't cross-linked that much it should still remove it and remove it a lot softer so you can see it is working still taking off some chunks but that's fine giving me a bit of that texture which is good and it's better than using white because then we're going to get that blue shift happening and I don't want that just this way I'm just going straight back to the board so the LU panel the whiter that and remember wherever it's too aggressive if it does strip right back like it has in some spots well that's where you can bring the darker vein in there to hide it I wouldn't stress too much about it See that there? That's pretty ugly. I think I'll leave it at that. I don't think I'll do much more. Just need it a little bit. So we've got a darker transparent black here. So this one's pretty much black. Put that in my airbrush. And again, just going nice and easy with it. This will be the hardest part because now you've got to be a bit more accurate. But again, spidering out and doing just some dots along the vein will look cool. And then I'll do a bit of blending as well. A few of the dots, spidering them out. Now remember you gotta be very careful with the stronger black now because if you pull back too far on that trigger it'll spider out on you. But yeah just be careful. I'm not going as heavy on there because there's no need. 
So you want to vary the harshness, some areas soft, some areas heavier, just like I did in the first layer. I wouldn't say it's a super difficult effect. I mean, you do need a bit of control for this step, but on the same token, it is forgiving because they're not necessarily perfect lines anyway. But what is difficult is to keep nice and subtle. So I'd probably urge that more than anything on this one. Just go nice and easy with it. Gradually build up areas and darken them. And just don't be too heavy handed. Notice here how I went too harsh. Let's go ahead and fix that up. I'm just gonna break it up with the darker transparent black. Another section where it's a bit bright, just dusting over that. Blending some of these out as well. Even blowouts like that not too concerned about, just adds to the effect. The hardest thing is really controlling them. Okay, so I think some of these veins in the marble need to go just a fraction darker in spots. So I've actually got some reducer in my cup. You can see there's quite a bit in there, just under half a cup, and I've just filled the rest up with some black because I've been so cautious with this. I could have actually skipped to this step first off and just gone with the darker tone, that solid black. So it just means I have to now go over the top. I'm not gonna go over everything though. I'm going to just darken some areas that I wish to darken and leave some of that mid-tone in there just so it's not a complete waste of time. Just joining up a few sections. Just getting that darker tone in there as a bit of contrast. Again, a few darker spots here and there. The unevenness really does bring it all together. So now that you know how to airbrush marble, why not take a look at some more special effects? I'll pop some links in the description below to those videos as well as the playlist. And to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.